My name is Rick Steno and I work in the Flash Solutions Division inside of LSI and my presentation is on the LSI Flash Based Storage Solutions to Accelerate Databases. And today we'll be going over LSI technologies, database performance pain points, Flash and Intelligent Caching, and LSI's predictor software. So what are the database performance pain points? Some of them can be meeting performance SLAs with constant data growth. Most databases are I.O. bound. Disk storage performance is like performance gains in other areas like CPU and in network. Flash is expensive per gigabyte. Storage systems develop data hotspots over time and DBAs don't have the time to constantly tune to get rid of or eliminate those data hotspots. So flash storage value propositions. Regardless of your storage architecture, any block device like a SAN or a DAS, flash-based technologies can accelerate your database deployments. This presentation will highlight easy to implement PCIe flash architectures that can dramatically improve your database performance with the lower total cost of ownership. These solutions are quite simple to implement into your existing system with little or no DBA involvement or database changes. These solutions will help alleviate some of the database performance pain points. So the various types of flash for database applications. So flash can be presented as a LUN or a disk drive for persisting data. This is the fastest and the most reliable way to implement flash. flash device can also be a cache device which is transparent to the operating system, to the database, and mostly to the DBA. So why use Flash in a database environment? So different parts of the hardware you have different latencies. For example, main memory latency is measured in nanoseconds, where hard disk drives are measured in microseconds or milliseconds. A flash device is measured in microseconds. So what are some of the current design inefficiencies? If a server has a lot of memory, you have a lot of CPUs to support that memory, which require a lot more software licenses. Also, you might have hundreds of spinning hard disks that to support your high level of IOPS or megabytes per second. And some of the flash benefits are big performance gains with current or the same amount of CPUs and possibly a reduction of CPUs. We've also seen up to 50x performance gains or reduced read latencies by going to a PCIe flash device. And the PCIe flash device requires low power consumption. So three ways to implement PCIe flash devices in a database environment. You can use all flash, no hard disk. You can use flash as a cache device to implement intelligent caching in front of a SAN. Or you can do intelligent caching in front of direct attached storage. So what are the benefits of an all flash implementation? You can boot off of our flash device, there's low host RAM usage, there's stable performance over the life of the device, there's multiple range of capacities, lower power consumption, and reduction in write amplification. So we do a lot of benchmarks and in this case we did a benchmark using NoSQL and we used the Yahoo benchmark YCSB over a three node sharded system. And we did a baseline using hard disks. We replaced the hard disk with the PCIe flash device and we got a 50x performance gain. So if you notice in the chart with hard disk we got 2,000 operations per second. When we switched over to the PCIe flash we got almost 100,000 operations per second. The read latency average using hard disk was 50 milliseconds. On the PCIe flash, it was an average of one millisecond. 
So implementing a, the nitro warp drive in an Oracle environment. You can actually turn on the database smart flash cache feature which acts as a second level buffer cache to the database. It changes physical reads to logical reads and this is supported in a rack cluster. So what database smart flash cache is is when data is evicted from the buffer cache Oracle writes it out to the database smart flash cache which is on the PCIe flash device and any subsequent reads will be read from the smart flash cache. Another benchmark we did, the top chart, this is an AWR report from the database. If you notice the number one wait event is a sequential read, average wait time is 63 milliseconds, and that one wait event took 97 percent of the total database time. By just implementing Oracle database smart flash cache, the number one wait event now is the database smart cache physical read and that was an average of 352 microseconds which results in a 180x improvement in single block read latency reduction. And also since we're taking IOPS away from the storage array the DB file sequential read dropped from 63 milliseconds down to 13 milliseconds. Another way to implement Nitro Warp Drive in an Oracle database environment is to implement partitioning, which allows placing hot and cold data onto separate storage devices. You place all the hot data on a PCIe card, all the cold data on spinning disks. And in some of the later releases of Oracle, Oracle is providing tools to automate this migration from flash to spinning disk as the data cools. So multiple ways to deploy a PCIe flash cache into the database environment. You can create multiple LUNs and use each LUN for a specific purpose and then assign those LUNs to an individual databases. You can also use multiple PCIe flash cards to create a RAID or an Oracle ASM fault tolerant disk for persisting data. You can also use multiple Nitro warp drives to create a larger pool of flash for intelligent caching. So implementing intelligent hard disk caching, you, we use a flash device as the cache device, which is very cheap to generate a large amount of IOPS and megabytes per second, where a hard disk is very expensive at providing a large amount of IOPS and megabytes per second, but very cheap at capacity. So in intelligence and caching, we use the LSI Nitro Warp Drive as the cache device. We have host-based software that looks at all the data activity on that LUN and we determine if that data is hot or not. And if we determine it's hot, we copy that data to the cache device. Any subsequent read will be read from the cache device. So a benchmark we did for VMworld last year we had a VM client machine and we had a MySQL that's running at the top and a SQL server running at the bottom on one client with hard disk and our intelligent caching on the left and on the right we're just using hard disks same database setup. MySQL we got a 35x gain in performance and in SQL server we got a 121x performance gain. So intelligent caching using Nitro Megaraid this is intelligent caching in front of direct attached storage. In an Oracle benchmark, we got a 9x performance gains by just implementing the intelligent caching in front of DAS. No DBA involvement and no database changes. So some of the Nitro Mega Raid benefits are we provide many capabilities for the DBA to deploy flash. You can use all the flash for intelligent caching. You can use multiple Nitro Mega Raid cards to meet flash capacity requirements. You can use part of the flash for intelligent caching or you can use part of the flash for persisting data. Or you can use part of the flash for a system boot drive. 
Nitro Megaroid is unique and it provides the flexibility to carve out the flash to meet multiple solutions. Other benefits from implementing intelligent caching. There's little or no DBA involvement, does not require any changes to the database, does not require any changes to the storage, works with any database release or database version, use a single or multiple PCIe flash card to meet the cache capacity, and most popular operating systems are supported. So the intelligent caching provides a method of tiered data without the need of a DBA to actually move data. Hot data will be cached while cool data will be read from the hard disk. So Nitro Predictor Software. So when we work with customers, we ask DBAs what's the read-write, split, how much hot data do they have, and what type of database activity. And a lot of them don't know. So we wrote a tool that goes out and runs alongside the database while the application is running. And we can look at how the disk is accessed and we create multiple reports. In this report, it shows the read-write split, it shows the hot data size, and it actually shows the cache hits and misses. For example, in this application, it's 70% reads, 30% writes. There's five gigs of hot data. So we don't know if it's a terabyte data or 500 gigs worth of data, but it's five gigs of hot data. And also on the left, if you notice, we look at the data and we determine how much time will it take for that data to become cached. And in this case, about 500 to 600 seconds is when we get pretty good uh, cache hit rate on the data. So any subsequent reads will be filled from the cache. So in summary, Flash can dramatically accelerate databases. We have big performance gains and large latency reductions, sometimes thousands of percent improvement. Be sure to match needs and capabilities. At least three options exist to accelerate databases. An all-flash implementation, intelligent sand caching, and intelligent direct attach caching. Thank you for watching this webcast. If you have any questions, here's my email address. We also have quite a few documents out there using our technologies in the database area. It's on the smarterwaytofaster.com website. Thanks again.